Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is stuck in Delhi and likely for another night because his official aircraft is unserviceable. So he and his entire delegation are stranded. But even as India hosts Justin Trudeau in Delhi for the G20 and beyond, Canada is busy green signaling what it loves best, the Khalistanis. The Khalistani terrorists are getting a free run even as Canada's Prime Minister is our guest here in India. The government has given its nod to yet another Khalistani protest in British Columbia, that's in Vancouver. Khalistani terror group Seek for Justice arranged the referendum at a Gurdwara in Surrey. In a provocative speech, Khalistani terrorists gave an open threat to Prime Minister Modi, Home Minister Shah and Foreign Minister Dr. Jay Shankar. This comes a day after Prime Minister Modi conveyed India's very strong concerns about anti-India activities of Khalistani elements in Canada to his Canadian counterpart, Justin Trudeau. Well, notably, Canada gave permission to another protest while Trudeau is, like I said, stuck in India as his official aircraft has faced a technical snag. We have an update that a backup aircraft is on its way to pick up Prime Minister Trudeau from Delhi. Well, in the past couple of months, major anti-India incidents have been reported in Canada, including posters revealing the names, details, photographs of Indian ambassadors, high commiss commissioners and officials in Canada, the United States and elsewhere calling for harm to be inflicted on them. Despite all this, Prime Minister Trudeau has not taken a single bit of action, which makes many believe that he's being soft on Khalistani separatists because of local domestic compulsions. But Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's helpless sympathy and refusal to take action against Khalistani terrorists in Canada is only one part of the story. And it is on India today that another part of Canada's anti-India policy now stands fully revealed and it has gone viral on social media. It's become a huge talking point. It all began with this comment by former IFS officer, Ambassador Vivek Karchu during our G20 coverage. Listen very carefully. Canada regularly denies visas to members of our security forces who have served in Jammu and Kashmir. Right. Canada has also denied visas to members of our uh, services mm. about which we do not talk about and I don't wish to talk about, including very senior people who have served in these services. Canada, while, uh, while asking for visa applications, demands that these security personnel should inform the Canadians of the places where they have served. Yes. That is very often confidential. Now, I do not know if the government of India has ever objected to it mm. or it has taken it up. It goes back to the time when I was secretary <coughs> in the ministry and in charge of the management of relations with Canada. I remember then, and I think this is important for your viewers to know, yes, very that they had done so with a member of the Border Security Force. Mm. And I had called the Canadian High Commissioner in and I had said this is unacceptable. And then I would retired soon thereafter. So it's been 12 years since my retirement and right. I think 13 years since this particular incident. Uh, I personally feel that the time has come when the government of India should send out an advisory <coughs> to all security personnel, uh, including retired personnel, mm. that they will not respond to such information being sought by the Canadians with regard to visa applications. This is an incredibly unknown and yet a truly, truly shocking and upsetting aspect of India-Canada relations. And viewer, I have to tell you right off the bat that this is not something that has happened now. It's been going on for years together, possibly even decades. After India Today played out what? Ambassador Karchu had said during our G20 coverage, I've been flooded with messages from veteran military personnel who said, 
thank you India today for highlighting this issue. This has been festering for a long time and nobody has read the Riot Act to Canada. Well, that's what we're doing now and the government is watching. Joining me live now, Gaurav Savant, our managing editor who helped me put this story out. Also with us live, we're privileged to have three veterans of the Indian military who have personally faced these questions and visa denial at the hands of the Canadian government. These are people who have put their lives on the line for India and India's sovereignty and they were asked questions about where they served when they were in service, where they were positioned, where they were appointed and on the basis of that they were denied visas. Joining me live, Con Colonel Alankar Bharadwaj, Colonel Rajender Kochar and Air Commodore Kedar Thakkar. I want to go across first to Colonel Bharadwaj. Colonel, welcome. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this entire Canadian policy, most people didn't know about it. I have covered defense for years together, and I also was shocked because I was not aware of it either. Take us through very quickly your experience of what happened when you applied for a visa, sir. Uh, thanks, Shiv, uh, for inviting me on your show. Uh, I'm very glad that you've, you know, you picked up such an important topic, and I would say it's a little touchy topic for a number of defense officers who face problems when they apply for a Canadian visa. Now, talking about my personal experience, uh, I have a couple of relations, friends in US and Canada, and I applied for this visa uh, with both the countries way back in 2009. Hmm. Now, 72 hours after applying for US visa, I got my visa, and then I applied for the Canadian visa. So the very first question, you know, which was put across, uh, and uh, I got a communique that they want to know where have you served? Uh, what are the locations? Uh, probably who's your boss? And uh, in, in particular, I was guided by my travel agent that, you know, probably they want to know if there are any kind of, you know, uh, problems you've had in Jammu and Kashmir. Hmm. And what guidance I got, I wrote very categorically that, look, I'm a logistics officer and never in my life I have, you know, got involved in active uh, insurgency. Hmm. Now, after this, there was a total... Uh, you know, for good about three weeks. Uh, for, and the good, good olden days, you know, you had to buy a ticket first and then apply for a visa. Yes. My family was traveling with me and I got my visa from Canadians after uh, 22, 23, then just two days before the flight. So had I not got my visa and the passport in time, mm. I would have my flight to the US also. Now the ordeal did not get over uh, at that time itself. Once I landed up in the U.S. and I was traveling to Canada, along with my relations who happened to be U.S. nationals, uh, again, the vehicle was stopped. And good about for 15, 20 minutes, uh, the person at the border outpost questioned me about my, uh, you know, stay in Assam, uh, how, what about the operations I did in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, it was only after I laid stress and I said, firstly, look, there's no case against me. Number two, I've served in the United Nations uh, from 20, uh, 2000 to 2001, and the people have done a background check. Yes. Uh, let, me, let me go. And it, it's, I've traveled quite a lot, and I have never experienced this kind of a thing. I've been to good about 27-odd countries, 